What is going on everybody? Welcome back to a new video. I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday season. I personally took a bit of a break from making content just so the holidays didn't become a little too stressful. But we are back now and ready to hit the ground running because we are just a little under two weeks away from hitting the show head. This is the video that I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for. I'm finally getting around to making my gear video because it's taken me a while to make sure that everything that I have is actually trail ready. I didn't want to make this video until I was confident in this gear's trail worthiness. Now the date for us to embark on this journey is rapidly approaching and I couldn't be more ready for it physically. I'm confident mentally, I am beyond confident, and as far as the gear goes, we have just about all of the essentials that we'll need to hit the trailhead and get this whole thing started. There's probably things we'll switch out here and there, but for the most part, we are ready to embark. However, there are uh, just a very small handful of things that need to be hammered out before we leave both on this channel and behind the scenes. The next few videos I'm gonna be working on are gonna be gear videos. They're gonna be divided up into three different videos I'm gonna be working on. One you're watching right now, another one is gonna be designated to my wardrobe specifically, and then the final one is gonna be any other odds and ends that I want to cover. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be breaking down the big three that I'll be taking with me on the trail. Now, don't worry if you're unfamiliar with hiker lingo, when new words like this pop up, I'll be sure to break them down as the series goes on. So the big three basically refers to the big three essentials that every through hiker is going to need on their trip. This is our pack, obviously, our shelter, and our sleep system. So first up on the list, you guys can see it right behind me here. That is my D-Hike Well 60 liter backpack here. This the hike well pack is only 2.2 pounds or one kilogram. I hope that's right for you, you know, non-Americans out there. This thing has a bunch of straps. It's easy to secure. I've attempted to put everything I possibly can into it in packing cubes. If you watched my teaser trailer announcement, then you, you see me actually using these packing cubes. Those are not actually coming with me on the trail. At the time, they were the most convenient way of me packing everything up. But after some trial and error, I, I realized that they were just an unnecessary uh, burden. And also, they weren't waterproof. Um, a lot of the things that I was putting into those cubes, I've now just shoved into plastic bags. These are all things that we're going to cover in our odds and ends video, so look forward to that. I would probably finish the trail with this pack unless I just happen to stumble across a better one out there. Anyway guys, if you would like to check out this pack for yourself, you can find it on Amazon and the link for it and everything else that we talk about in this video, you can find in the description below. So moving on to our tent. This is from Sierra Designs. This is the Lost Coast 2 and you guys will be seeing footage of it all deployed and in action right now but basically this is what it looks like when it's all compact and it's real neat to just strap on to the bottom of my pack uh it's not you could hear that probably hit the floor uh, it's not light so this guy this tent is uh, a completely freestanding tent i believe it has two poles and a handful of stakes. This guy is four pounds and 10 ounces, which uh, like I said, oh wait, I can't remember if I mentioned it already in this video, but if you guys are here looking for lightweight gear, you're looking in the wrong place. Whereas that pack is technically considered lightweight, it might be one of the only things I have that is. So according to Sierra Designs, the Lost Coast tent proves you don't need to spend an arm and a leg to get a great aluminum pole backpacking tent. Made for the trail newbie, the easy to set up X-Pole freestanding design lets you explore like a pro no matter your experience level. The seams on this tent come taped, which 
if you're unfamiliar with seam taping, before you do a hike of your own, I highly suggest you look into it. Because if your equipment is not, well, you might end up having some pretty wet nights. This, this tent can supposedly sleep two people. I haven't tried, uh, but with just myself and my pack and all of my gear spread out inside of it, it is very roomy for me personally. It's only got two poles, so it's super easy to set up, super easy to keep track of everything. I only paid $120 for this tent, which I'm not super familiar with how expensive some tents are. I was happy with this. I think it's gonna hold up for a while anyway. It is rather encumbersome though. So depending on you know the wear and tear that we put on our body as we go, I don't know um, if lowering our weight is going to become more of a priority as we go or not. If you guys are interested in checking out this tent for yourself, the link to Sierra Designs is in the description. Alrighty, moving on. Next up, we have our sleeping pad, which actually, as a matter of fact, is our second piece of technical lightweight gear, even though that's entirely unintentional. This is the Gold Armor Ultra Light Sleeping Pad. This only weighs 17.3 ounces. I, I have had this sleeping pad for a very, very long time. Uh, it's one of the oldest pieces of outdoor camping equipment I've got. I originally used this with my hammock setup, but it was always not a favorite because I didn't have, I don't know. I would go to bed in my hammock and just every single time I would wake up and the sleeping pad had wiggled its way completely out the hammock. So I, I, I needed some straps or something to secure it and never wound up doing that. But I think sleeping on flat ground, this is gonna fare a little bit better. My only issue is it seems to deflate and I don't know if it's got a hole in it because of the wear and tear I've already put on it or what, but it seems like every time I air it up, it won't be long before it airs out. I am gonna be pairing this with an emergency blanket just in case, that way the emergency blanket helps reflect some of that heat back up instead of uh, into the ground. So even if this does deflate in our sleep, I'm not gonna take the time to reinflate it I'm gonna do it once a night. <laughs> and if, it, if it's out of air in the morning, that just saves me a little bit of time squeezing the living daylights out of it. So, you guys can find this on Amazon, like with everything else, the link is in the description. However, when I was looking up all of these items to find the links for you guys, I did notice that this is no longer actually available at this moment. Whether or not that changes in the future, I'm not sure, but at the moment, this is no longer uh, accessible from Amazon so you'd have to look elsewhere if you're interested in this but with all the sleeping pads on the market you really don't need this one I think any other lightweight pad would probably do just fine all right guys this is our REI co-op trail break 30 30 uh, stands for 30 degrees Fahrenheit which is the temperature that you should be able to comfortably sleep in uh, give or take the comfort rating is actually 38 degrees Fahrenheit and the survival rating or the T limit is uh, 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, which uh, for those of you that are experienced backpackers, you might be raising an eyebrow at that information because if you've been paying attention, you know that I plan on leaving in the middle of January. If you're unfamiliar with AT, it's gonna be very, very cold. <laughs> probably some pretty extreme winter weather I might run into. So with that in mind, you might be wondering, why the hell do I have this sleeping pad? And that's an excellent question. Long story short, I didn't do enough research before purchasing my gear, and I thought that this would do the trick. Now I'm aware that it might not. But am I gonna switch it out? No because I'm already on a shoestring budget. And even though REI has a great return policy, uh, this guy is already, like I already struggle kind of putting this and the tent on the pack and clipping it all in there. So a bigger one for even colder weather, I don't know how I'm gonna carry it. For those unfamiliar, I 
I almost forgot to mention for those unfamiliar, sleeping bags have uh, two ratings on them. One is the comfort rating and one is the survival rating. If you're, and a lot of them don't always mention it. Like this says um, 30 degrees Fahrenheit, you think, oh, in 30 degrees, I should be fine. No, in 30 degrees, you'll survive, you're, but you're gonna, be, you're gonna be cold. According to Google, the average in the Smokies for January, February into March can kind of teeters into the low 20s uh, most nights. I don't know if that's super accurate, but that's what I'm going off of. And uh, since this is a survival rating in the high 20s, I'm just being incredibly optimistic that if I were to sleep in enough layers, I can, you know, take things off, add things when I need to sort of find that happy medium. So this shell of this sleeping bag, the outside material is made of polyester. It is stuffed with uh, synthetic down, I believe. Okay, so this is interesting. So I'm, I think this is the men's variant. Yeah, men's regular. Uh, REI refuses to tell me the weight of the men's sleeping bag, but the women's variant of this same exact sleeping bag is three pounds and six ounces. So we'll just say that the men's is probably about the same. All right, guys, so that does it for our big three. Definitely not a lightweight setup so far because let's try to do some math real quick. So that's nine and a half-ish pounds, uh, just from our big three. I don't know if that is good or bad, I really don't. All right guys, so that just about does it for this video. If you have any questions at all regarding our big three, be sure to ask them in the comments below. I'll be sure to respond to your individual comments or if a lot of people are asking similar questions, I can make a whole video responding to everything. If you guys are interested in the other gear that we're going to be taking with us on the Appalachian Trail, I have two other videos that are going to be breaking down everything else from my clothing to any other odds and ends. So anyway guys, if you enjoyed watching this video and stuck around to the end, be sure to like the video to show your support to this channel. I'm going to be doing my best to bring you guys genuine Appalachian Trail content before you know it. Obviously we're hitting the trailhead in like a week and a half. And I expect to have my first you know, day one video uh, uploaded not even, probably not even a few days after we actually physically step foot on the trail ourselves. So you guys have that to look forward to in literally just a few weeks. So I guess that does it. So with all that being said, don't forget, subscribe to join the journey. And thanks for watching.